Merry Christmas and welcome. Feliz Navidad y bienvenidos. Wesley Seminary graduates, families, and friends, welcome to this, your graduation day. Graduados, familiares, y amigos, bienvenidos a este día de graduación. We've gathered together remotely to celebrate this incredible accomplishment. Nos reunimos remotamente a celebrar este logro. To confer the degrees you have earned and to consecrate you anew for the ministry. A entregar los diplomas que han ganado y a consagrarlos de nuevo para el ministerio. Over the past few months, all of our lives have been disrupted by this pandemic. Por los últimos meses, nuestras vidas han sido interrumpidas por la pandemia. Everyday life looks very different. Cada día se ve diferente. Things we used to take for granted now require such additional thought and planning. Las cosas que tomábamos en balde ahora requieren pensamiento y planeación. And gathering in person at one location to celebrate is just not possible. Y reunirnos en un lugar para celebrar no es posible. But what is possible is to gather as one body across multiple countries. Lo que sí es posible es unirnos como un cuerpo a través de diferentes países. And to gather with two languages via an electronic platform. Y reunirnos en diferentes lenguajes a través de la plataforma electrónica. We are Wesley and you belong here. Somos Wesley, tú pertenices aquí. Let us join our hearts in prayer as one body. Unamos nuestras voces en oración como un solo cuerpo. Let us invoke the Holy Spirit's presence in each of our locations. Invitemos la presencia del Espíritu en todas nuestras localidades. Uniting us together in these moments of praise and worship. Uniéndonos juntos en estos momentos de adoración y oración. Let us pray. Oremos. Gracious Heavenly Father. Padre Celestial. We thank you that by your hand you have led us to this day. Agradecemos que por tu mano nos has dirigido a este día. This day of celebration and consecration. Este día de celebración y consagración. We thank you for keeping us these past months and years. Agradecemos que nos has guardado en estos meses y años. For providing for us through this journey. Por tu provisión en este viaje. And for equipping us to do the work your son set before us to do. Y para equiparnos a hacer el trabajo que tu hijo nos ha llamado a hacer. We thank you that through the challenges and trials we have faced. Te agradecemos que a pesar de los desafíos que hemos enfrentado. Over these past months that you have been with us. Durante estos meses tú has estado con nosotros. The season of the year finds our lives filled with anticipation. En esta temporada del año tenemos mucha anticipación. Anticipation for the celebration of Jesus coming as a babe in Bethlehem. Anticipación por celebrar el nacimiento de Jesús como bebé en Belén. And our hearts and spirits are filled with anticipation. Nuestros corazones y espíritus están llenos de anticipación. The anticipation and longing for Christ's return again. La anticipación de que Jesús va a regresar de nuevo. Lord, send your spirit upon us in these moments of gathering. Señor, envía tu espíritu sobre nosotros en este momento. Fill our rooms, our homes, our churches with your sweet presence. Llena nuestros cuartos, nuestros hogares y nuestra iglesia con tu presencia. Connect us across these miles. Conectanos a pesar de la distancia. Unite our voices and our hearts and minds in worship and praise. Une nuestras voces, corazones y mentes en adoración y alabanza. Convince us of your spirit at work in us even now. Convencenos del trabajo del Espíritu en nosotros. Compel us to go out into our world in the power of the Holy Spirit. Envíanos al mundo en el poder de tu Espíritu. Enable us, Lord, to bring your message of hope and freedom and healing. In Jesus' name we pray. Danos la capacidad de traer el mensaje de esperanza, libertad y sanidad en el nombre de Jesús. Amen.
It is an honor to introduce to you all Dr. David Wright, president of Indiana Wesleyan University. Dr. Wright is a man of God and a man of the word who lends his unending support to the mission of Wesley. We are blessed by his leadership, blessed by his friendship, and blessed by his presence with us today. Dr. Wright, thank you and welcome. President Durr, thank you so much for that warm and kind introduction. Gracias por esa bienvenida introducción. Graduates and families, honored guests and members of the Wesley Seminary community. Graduados, familiares y eh, invitados de honor de la familia de la comunidad de Wesley Seminary. It is a great joy for me personally to join with you in this unusual but still very special commencement ceremony. Es un gran honor podernos reunir de esta forma inusual, pero muy especial. We've looked forward to this day for a long time, haven't we? Hemos estado mirando este día por mucho tiempo. There may have been days when you did not think this day would arrive. Quizás hubo momentos donde nunca pensó que este día llegaría. Do you remember that night when you wondered whether you would make it to the end of the journey? ¿Recuerdas esa noche cuando te dudabas si llegarías al final? Aren't you glad you did not quit and you continued until today? ¿No estás agradecido que no te rendiste? We've looked forward to this time to celebrate with you because these occasions are very special. Siempre queremos celebrar con ustedes porque estas ocasiones son muy especiales. The achievements of our graduating classes are special for all of us who are involved in higher education and in seminary education. Los logros de aquellos que se gradúan son muy importantes para todos los que trabajamos en la educación superior. And today you deserve a special recognition and congratulation. Y hoy merecen un reconocimiento especial. There will always be a special place in our hearts for the Siempre graduating classes of the year 2020. Siempre habrá un lugar especial en nuestro corazón por esta clase del año 2020. Not only is this the 100th ceremony or the 100th anniversary of our university's founding, but it has been a, an amazing and special year. No solo celebramos 100 años desde que fuimos fundados como universidad, pero ha sido un año especial. With all of its surprises and its challenges, this year has tested our strength. Con las sorpresas y desafíos de este año, ha puesto nuestra fuerza en prueba. This year has tested your perseverance, your hope, and your sense of calling and purpose. Este año ha puesto a prueba nuestra perseverancia, esperanza y propósito. So today, I congratulate you not only because you have passed your tests, but you have passed the test. Quiero felicitarles no solo porque han pasado sus pruebas, pero han pasado la prueba. Not only have you completed your course syllabi, but you've also mastered the curriculum that life set for you this no, year. No solo han cumplido con el currículo de las tareas, sino que se han adueñado de los desafíos de la vida. Perhaps you did not realize all of the extra challenges that would be placed upon you this year in your ministries as you completed your degrees. Quizás usted no se imaginó los desafíos que vendrían en este año durante el tiempo que estaba estudiando. But you pers persevered through good times and bad times, through thick and thin. Pero ustedes han perseverado en los tiempos buenos y malos a pesar del desafío. So today I celebrate the achievement of the degrees you've studied so hard to achieve, sought so diligently, in spite of this year's many unexpected obstacles. Hoy celebro los logros que han uh, logrado y celebramos juntos a pesar de los desafíos de este año. So here at Wesley Seminary, your outstanding faculty members have given you many chances to grow in understanding and in spiritual maturity and wisdom. Durante este tiempo, sus profesores en el seminario les han dado oportunidades para crecer y madurar en el Señor. Hopefully your head has been filled with brilliant knowledge. Ojalá su cabeza se haya llenado de mucho conocimiento. And I hope that your hands have been trained for even greater skill. Y espero que sus manos tengan más habilidades. 
But today I'd like to offer just a few short reflections about what I think might prove to be the most important part of your education. Pero hoy quiero compartir una reflexión de las cosas que creo que son más importantes en una educación. I'd like to offer just a few reflections about the preparation of your heart. Quiero dar unas reflexiones sobre la preparación de tu corazón. Proverbs chapter 4 verse 23 reads as follows. Reads as follows. Turn it so let me continue. Proverbs chapter 4, verse 23 reads as follows. Proverbios, capítulo 4, 23 dice. Guard your heart above all else, for it determines the course of your life. Por sobre toda cosa, guarda tu corazón, porque de él mana la vida. In the English, I like the way the New American Standard renders the verse. It says, watch over your heart with all diligence. Hay una versión que dice, vigila a tu corazón con diligencia. The word heart occurs in over 1,000 times in the Bible. It is the most common reference to the human anatomy in Scripture. La palabra corazón ocurre más de mil veces en la Biblia y es conocida antropológicamente como el término más común en la Biblia. And so, friends, you are taking your calling and your education into a world of hungry hearts. Ustedes están llevando su conocimiento y educación a un mundo de corazones abiertos y hambrientos. Many of those who are going to look to you for pastoral care are carrying broken hearts. Muchos buscarán que ustedes les ayuden a sanar sus corazones. Perhaps some of them are even living with despairing hearts. Algunos pueden tener desesperanza en su corazón. You will take your places of ministry among those who are looking for meaning and purpose and direction. Ocuparán lugares de ministerio en frente de personas que buscan el sentido y la dirección. Despite all of the conflict and ferment around the question of the church today, People still look to the church for help and healing. A pesar de todo el conflicto y la falta de confianza en la iglesia, las personas sí están buscando respuestas y sanidad. We look to our pastors and our church leaders for purpose, something to believe in, a hope for tomorrow. Buscamos que los pastores y los líderes nos den esperanza para el mañana. And so you go into a world from Wesley Seminary that will look to you to feed their hearts. Así que ustedes van a un mundo que está esperando que les alimenten el corazón. And your world of ministry will test your hearts. Y la tarea del ministerio va a poner a prueba su corazón. Sometimes it will drain the energy from your heart. Quizás tome la energía de su corazón. And other times it will fill your hearts with joy. And satisfaction. Y en otros momentos llenará su corazón de gozo y satisfacción. And I pray and hope that your time at Wesley Seminary has helped you to nurture your heart. Y oro y espero que el tiempo que han pasado en el seminario haya llenado su corazón. Your heart will carry you through moments of temptation. Porque su corazón los va a llevar a sobrepasar momentos de tentación. Your heart will carry you through hours of disillusionment. Su corazón los va a animar en los tiempos de falta de ánimo. Your heart will carry you through seasons of adversity. Su corazón los va a llevar por tiempos de dificultades. Your heart will carry you through days of perplexity. Y su corazón los puede llevar a través de días de perplejidad. And your heart will carry you through the dry times until you reach those moments when the showers of blessing come to, to heal your heart. Y su corazón los llevará por tiempos de sequedad hasta que encuentren los oasis que van a alimentar su corazón. So in the words of the wise teacher, guard your hearts. Así que en las palabras de este hombre sabio, guarda tu corazón. Listen for the whisper of God's spirit in the stillness of your heart. 
Escucha el respiro y el suspiro del Espíritu en tu corazón. In the midst of conflict, watch over your hearts. En medio del conflicto, vigila tu corazón. And in the bustle and the hustle and the busyness of your ministries, watch over your hearts. Y cuando te sientas abrumado y luchando en tu ministerio, cuida tu corazón. Set aside for yourself moments of reflection and rest. Aparta momentos de reflexión y descanso. Of recreation. De recreación. Cultivate true and deep and lasting relationships. Cultiva relaciones profundas que perduren. The only other verse in the Bible that uses this phrase, guard your hearts, was used by the Apostle Paul in writing to the Philippians in chapter 4. En el único lugar en donde se usa este lenguaje de guardar su corazón, él lo usa Pablo en Filipenses capítulo 4. And I think the words that Paul wrote to the Philippians so many years ago apply to today as we go into ministry and service. Y creo que las palabras que Pablo habló hace mucho tiempo se aplican hoy a nosotros que vamos a entrar en el servicio del ministerio. Do not be anxious about anything. No estés ansioso por nada. But in everything by prayer and supplication with thanksgiving, let your requests be made known to God. Pero en toda oración con agradecimiento sean conocidas vuestras oraciones delante de Dios. And the peace of God, which passes all understanding, the peace of God will guard your hearts. Y la paz de Dios que sobrepasa todo entendimiento, esa paz guardará tu corazón. The peace of God will guard your hearts and your minds in Christ Jesus. La paz de Dios guardará tu mente y corazón en Cristo Jesús. So friends, you will always be a part of the Wesley Seminary family. Amigos, ustedes siempre serán parte de la familia de Wesley. You have here faculty and administrators and staff who love you. Ustedes tienen profesores y administradores que los aman. Your victories will be our victories. Sus victorias serán nuestras victorias. Your joys will be our joys. Y sus gozos serán nuestros gozos. Your challenges will weigh on our hearts. Sus desafíos van a pesar en nuestros corazones. And when you need encouragement, we will be there. Y cuando necesiten que alguien los anime, estaremos allí. Because we love you and we're proud of you. Porque los amamos y estamos muy orgullosos. But I remind you there is one who loves you even more than we do. Pero les recuerdo que hay uno que los ama aún más que nosotros. There is one who watches over your heart. Hay alguien que está guardando tu corazón. There is one who wishes to give the peace that passes understanding in every moment of your ministry. Hay alguien que quiere darte una paz que sobrepasa todo entendimiento en cada momento de tu ministerio. Our dear Heavenly Father holds your hearts in divine hands. Nuestro Padre Celestial tiene tu corazón en sus manos. Gentle and powerful. Él es gentil y poderoso. Able to do for you what no one else can do. Él puede hacer por ti lo que nadie más puede hacer. May our Father God bless your ministries and guard your hearts in Christ Jesus. Que Dios nuestro Padre bendiga su ministerio y guarde sus corazones en Cristo Jesús. God bless you. Dios los bendiga. La ceremonia de encapuchado en el contexto de nuestra celebración de hoy simboliza la integración de la erudición y la práctica del ministerio que caracteriza su vida como estudiante de Wesley Seminario y como ministro del Evangelio. La capucha cuenta la corrida historia de la vida académica del pastor erudito. La capucha está revestida con terciopelo de un color que representa la disciplina académica. En nuestro caso, el color escarlata representa la teología. 
el balde y el foro a menudo con un galón en un segundo color dentro del capo es el color de la universidad patrona, patrocinadora. La ceremonia de graduación se llama apropiadamente commencement, una palabra francesa que significa comienzo. Esto no es el final, sino es el principio. A medida que se gradúa, se compromete a seguir siendo un estudiante de la palabra. Como graduado en teología, se compromete a estudiar a Dios durante toda su vida. Vivir maravillado ante su continua revelación y acércase a él cada día. La capucha también es un símbolo y recordatorio del manto profético un recordatorio del pacto que has hecho de predicar la palabra fuera de tiempo, de pastorear al pueblo de Dios y de unirte a Jesús mientras colaboras con él en la viña del Padre. The Hooding Ceremony in the context of our celebration today symbolizes the integration of scholarship and the practice of ministry that characterizes your life as a Wesley Seminary student and a minister of the gospel. The Hood tells the story of the pastor, scholar, uh, their academic life. The Hood is faced with a velvet of a color representing the academic discipline. In our case, the scarlet color represents theology. The trim and lining, often with a chevron in a second color inside the Hood, is the color of the sponsoring university. The graduation ceremony is fittingly called commencement, a French word that means beginning. So this is not the end, but the beginning. And as you graduate, you're making a commitment to continue to be a student of the word. And as a theology graduate, you are making a commitment to a lifelong study of God, to live in wonder at his continual revelation and to draw closer to him each day. The hood is also a symbol and a reminder of the prophetic mantle, a reminder of the covenant you have made to preach the word in and out of season, to shepherd God's people and to yoke yourself with Jesus as you co-labor with him in the Father's vineyard. En este momento, quiero invitar a la persona que seleccionaste para que te ponga la capucha. So at this moment, I want to invite the person you've selected to put the hood on you. President Wright, it is my distinct honor and privilege to present the candidates for the following academic degrees. The Master of Arts in Ministry, the Master of Divinity. Each of these students has demonstrated significant development in character, in scholarship, and in leadership, and all have successfully completed or expect soon to complete all of the requirements for their respective degrees. And we are incredibly proud of each and every one of them. Dr. Joseph will now present the degree through the reading of their name. Ryan Akers. Mm -hmm. 
James Alchambault. <laughs> Henrietta Brown. <laughs> Taylor Carter. Thomas Cicciarella. La Veta Coleman. David Hopper. Joaquin Rosales Oseguera. Antonio Patterson. <laughs> Jake Shell. Well, we got to Mark. Mark Brown. Barbara Faro. Trevor Foley. <laughs> Yay! Yay! Jonathan Hunter. Sadie Kamensky. <laughs> Tyler Klein. Michael Osler. <laughs> Nathan Rye.
Dr. Joseph, have you completed the readings? Yes, I have. This, this completes the reading of the degrees. Well, if you're able, will the graduates please rise? It is my distinct privilege to congratulate each of you upon the successful completion of your degree requirements. We're proud of you. Can you tell that? Amen. <laughs> Our prayer is that you will distinguish yourselves through a life of service to God and to your fellow human beings and bring honor to Christ and to your alma mater, Wesley Seminary. And now by the power vested in me by the Board of Trustees and the State of Indiana, I confer upon you the appropriate degree with all the rights pertaining thereto. You may now turn your tassel as an indication of having completed your degree. Congratulations. Well, friends, we want to take a moment to worship the Lord together at this time of year. And so I invite you wherever you are to sing along uh, with this great hymn of Isaac Watts, Joy to the World. Joy to the world, the Lord is come. Let earth receive her King. Let every heart prepare Him heaven and nature sing and heaven and nature sing and heaven and heaven and nature sing joy to the earth the savior reigns let men their songs employ while fields and floods rocks hills and plains repeat the sounding Joy, repeat the sounding joy, repeat, repeat the sounding joy. No more let sins and sorrows grow, nor thorns infest the ground. He comes to make his blessings flow, far as the curse is found. Far as the curse is found, far as, far as the curse is found. And he rules the world with truth and grace, and makes the nations prove the glories of his righteousness and wonders of his love. And wonders of his love, and wonders, wonders of his love. And now, graduates, as it is in your local church or in your denomination, the seminary is one of those entities that validates you for ministry. Ministry, as you know, is not a job. It is a response to a calling. And that calling is a response to a covenant relationship that you have with God. With that in mind, let me share this covenant reading with you. And now, beloved, let us bind ourselves with willing bonds to our covenant God. Let us take the yoke of Christ upon us. In doing so, we affirm that his approval and blessing on our life is the highest reward that we seek. Christ has many services to be done. Some tasks are easy, others will be difficult. Some tasks will bring honor and praise, others may bring us criticism and rebuke. Some tasks fit very well with our natural talents and desires. Others will call us to do what is contrary to our personal preferences. In some tasks, 
we may please Christ and please ourselves. In others, we will only please Christ when we deny ourselves and endure hardship for the kingdom's sake. Yet, the power to do all things is certainly given to us through Christ who strengthens us. Therefore, let us each make this covenant with God our own pledge of faithfulness. Let us commit, to our, commit our lives to the Lord and resolve in his strength never to go back on what we promised this day. Let us yield ourselves to the Lord. And now the graduates, let uh, I invite you to pray with me. Lord God, Holy Father, you have called us through Christ to be your disciples in partakers in your covenant of grace. We now take upon ourselves with joy, the yoke of obedience, seeking to do your will and build your kingdom. We are no longer our own. We are servants of the Lord Jesus Christ. Let us continue to pray. Lord, make me an instrument of your peace. Where there is hatred, let me show love. Oops. Where there is injury, pardon. Where there is doubt, faith. Where there is despair, hope. Where there is darkness, light. Where there is sadness, joy. For it is in giving that we receive. And forgetting that we find ourselves. In pardoning that we are pardoned. And in dying, and dying that, that we are, we are born, born to, to eternal, eternal life. And with our mics continued on mute, I invite you to read the statement of commitment and an attitude of reverence with me. Lord Jesus, if you will just let me be your servant, then I will be content. I make no demands of my own. I will let you write the contract. So command me to do whatever you wish. Only let me be called the servant of God. Make me whatever you wish. Place me wherever you wish. Let me be full. Let me be empty. Let me have all things, let me have nothing. In any case, I will be content. With my whole heart, I offer myself to your work in the world and your plan for my life. At this moment, we would like to ask all the family members and friends, if you would uh, surround the graduates wherever you are and lay your hands upon them, we wanna say a prayer of consecration. 
Let us pray. Lord, we are in your presence, celebrating this sacred moment. Today, these graduates have completed an academic endeavor and are being honored for their achievements. We celebrate their faithfulness and resilience. We applaud their efforts and their sacrifice. But the sacredness of this moment goes beyond just the things that they have achieved. Because today they are standing on the threshold of new beginnings. And on the other side, your voice is calling them, saying, follow me. Follow me once again. Pick up your cross. Deny yourself. And follow me. So we pray today and consecrate these graduates so that they may leave it all behind. Stand up and follow you. And some are right now asking the question, Lord, where are you staying? And you are telling them, come and see. May they have the courage to follow you to the unknown. May they hear your voice like Abraham saying, come and I will show you once you get there. May they follow you on the journey. Today, we stand in your presence in this sacred moment, consecrating these graduates so that they may be able to discern those moments when you are calling them to stand up and say, perhaps it is for such a season as this, that you have given me the influence. I will go and I will stand up for your people. And if I perish, that I perish. Lord, today we consecrate with these graduates so that they may walk in the conviction when there is social pressure that elevates any other image that it is not you, like Daniel's friends, that they would be able to say, the Lord is able to deliver us. And even if not, we will not bow down. Hoy consagramos a cada uno de los graduados para que pueda responder al llamado de seguirte a ti con la convicción y la certeza de que tú estarás con ellos. Lord, we know that no eye has seen and no ear has heard the things that you have prepared for them. So we pray that they may have the courage to carry on with the calling and the vocation in their lives. As they look back and reflect on all the years that they've spent in preparation, may they know that you've given them everything they need to accomplish your work. Like Moses, that they may look at the staff in their hands, at the tools that you put under their belts, and walk in confidence that the Lord is walking with them. Affirm their steps rekindle the fire of the vision and we consecrate in this holy moment each and every one of them for the service of our lord jesus the messiah amen praise god from whom all blessings flow Praise Him, O creatures here below. Praise Him above, ye heavenly host. Praise Father, Son, and Holy Ghost.
precious graduates of Wesley Seminary, we are so proud of you. And most of all, we are grateful to borrow from the Apostle Paul for Christ in you, the hope of glory. In every single course you've taken at Wesley Seminary, you have likely encountered a word from the word who is Jesus Christ. So it seems fitting to let Christ the word have the final word about well words. At the very end of the Sermon on the Mount, he said these words. Everyone who hears these words of mine and puts them into practice is like a wise person who built his house on the rock. The rain came down, the streams rose, and the winds blew and beat against that house, but it did not fall because it had its foundation on the rock. But everyone who hears these words of mine and does not put them into practice is like a foolish man who built his house on sand. The rain came down, the streams rose, and the winds blew and beat against that house, and it fell with a great crash. Wesley Seminary graduates have the audacity, the courage, the compassion, the faith to build the house of your life and ministry on the rock of the church, Jesus the Christ. God bless you. Thank you all for joining with us today. What a joy it was to celebrate with you. And we were clapping and rejoicing with you right along with your families and friends where you are gathered. We pray that the Lord will bless you richly in this season as you embrace the Christ child and look forward to the coming of our Lord. May he bless you and keep you. May his face shine upon you and be gracious unto you this day and forevermore. In Jesus' name we pray with thanksgiving. Amen. We are proud of you, friends. We are proud of you. Go in peace to love and serve the Lord.